Before we get deeper into all of the specific components of a class, let's learn how to use static classes and non-static classes. When we are using a static class, the static class behaves just as a library, a container of components that we can readily use whenever we need them. Static data members are used directly from the class itself. So for example, let's take the console class. When we interact with the console class, we the console class contains a library of methods like the write line method, write method, read line, read key, etc. And then it has some properties like a title property. All of these components are static data members. We can use each static data member by calling it from the class itself. So the name of the class is console. I can access the write line method inside the console class by calling the write line method from the console class. Static data members are called from the class. When we use a non-static class, non-static classes are meant to build objects from. So the first thing we, we are going to do is build a new object of the type of the class. Then we can use all of the non-static data members from that object. Now let's look at the syntax on how do we create an object from a class. Well, the syntax goes as follows. Just like if I were to declare, to declare a variable of type integer, I would take the type and define and tie it with an identifier, int x, or maybe string y, or bool parse ok. We, we are, we define, whenever we declare a variable we, of a certain type, we match a type with an identifier. The exact same is true when we build uh, types, uh, objects of type, some class type. So for example, whatever the name of my class is, if I want to build an object of that type, first comes the class name, then my identifier, and then I need to build this object. The new keyword in C Sharp is a building keyword. So I want to build a new type of this class type, and then I'm going to call something called the, the, the constructor. And we will look at a constructor in a future video. But the constructor is a method that has the same name as the class. So we see the parentheses, this is a method. So I'm going to build a new type of object based on using this constructor method. This may be a little shaky now, but we'll try to make it more solid as the, as the videos go on. So an example of building a, an object from a non-static class, let's look at the random class. The random class, to use the random class, first I have to build an object of type random. So here the syntax would be random is the name of the class, r1 is the name of my object, and I'm going to build a new object using the default constructor of the random class. Once I build this object r1, I can start calling non-static methods from the object. So when you use a non-static when you want to use non-static data members, you have to first build an object, then call the data member from the object. Let's try to do an example that illustrates this. So here I have a, a, an empty main method, and I'm going to add a class. So I'm going to go up to Project, Add a Class. I'm going to choose just my generic class template, and I'm going to name my class example, the example class. So example.cs. When I add this class to my project, notice I have two uh, .c sharp files now. The program class contains my main method. My example class, it's in the same namespace, but the name of this class is example, class example. Whereas in my program class, we are working inside a class program. So this is a, this is a new class. Inside this class, I'm going to build two methods, a static method and a non-static method, and I will try to illustrate how you can use both methods. So first, I'm going to build a static method. We've already done this in a couple past videos, but we've never built a static method in a new class. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to use the access modifier public because I want to be able to use this method outside of the example class. Next, I'm going to give it the access modifier static. 
static means the method will be called from the class. This method is going to be simple. It's going to return nothing, and I'm going to call the method static hello. And inside this method, I'm just going to print to the console hello from the class. All right. So all of this, all this method does is prints a line of text to the console. This is a static method. Now I'm going to create a non-static method. This non-static method is also going to be public because I want to be able to use it outside of the class. But this method is not going to have the static keyword. It's just going to have void. And I'm going to call this non-static hello. And this method is going to print a single line of text. It's going to print the text hello from the object. Okay. So the only difference between these two methods is whether one is marked as static, the other is not marked as static. All right, let's see how we can use these methods. If I want to use the, we will say calling the, not, the static method first. If I want to use the static hello method, I have to use it from the class in which it was defined. So the example class. So to use the non-static method, or the static method, I'm sorry, I have to first start with the class, which is the example class. And I can click, when I put the dot notation after my class name, I get to access all of the data members inside the class. Now I've inherited a couple data members, uh, an equals method and a reference equals method. Let's not worry about those for right now. But notice I see my static hello method. Okay, I see my static hello method, I do not see my non-static hello method. So even though both of these methods are public, from the class, I can only see my static data members. So I can say example, and I can call the static hello method from my example class. And when I run this, we should be good to go. So hello from the class. So I can call static methods from the class. Now, how would I use my non-static hello? Well, as we've just seen, if I try to find that method from the class, I can't. First, I have to build an object from the example class. Then I can call the non-static method from the object. So here we will say calling a non-static method. First, we build an object. So to build an object from my example class, I'm going to use first the, the, the new data type I'm building is of type example. And I'm going to call this example uh, my example. Okay. This is just a variable name that, is, that will hold an object of type example. Now this variable is empty, so let's build an object and put it into this variable. So I'm going to say is equal to a new example. The, the keyword new is the building keyword. This example class name with the parentheses next to it, this is called the default constructor. We will do a video on those in a, in, in a little bit. But what I'm doing here is I'm creating a new object from the class. Now from this object, my example is the object. If I hit the dot notation, I can see all of the non-static elements of my object. And here, I, I have inherited a couple, equals, get hash code, get type, to string. We're not going to worry about these right now. But notice, from my object, I see my non-static method. But I do not see the static hello. So I can call my non-static method from an object built from the class. So let's run this and see what it looks like. So the first static method is called from the class, hello from the class. A non-static method is called from an object built from the class. So hello from the object is called from the object. Okay, so we will be using this these types of terminology and I will be doing these examples again and again and again in the next couple of videos and hopefully it will start solidifying.